right, so um, I'd also like to mention that there was actually a stop that I had originally planned to do that I thought maybe would be hard to fit everybody into. But um, down that path and on the other side of the road we walked up is what's called Hamilton Square. That's Hamilton is in Alexander Hamilton. No, he's not buried here. But his son, William Stephen Hamilton, is buried here. And um, I like to include him um, on tours like this because he is the probably the most unrestful spirit here in, in our cemetery. He's been dug up and reinterred at least three times. Uh, he originally passed uh, in, during the, the cholera epidemic that I had sort of briefly alluded to prior to that. Um, he basically was in Sacramento at the wrong time. He, you know, made a good fortune for himself as, elsewhere when he was passing through. And some people say that he was murdered. Um, it might be more likely that he died during that cholera epidemic. Um, and uh, basically he was interred in a mass grave and then, uh, you know, his family paid for him to be reinterred in a nice sort of individual grave and somewhere down the road the National Grand Army of the Republic um, whose monument we passed on the other side paid for uh, a larger sort of place for him so he has what's called Hamilton Square which is also a beautiful garden right by behind that chapel building where we were. Yeah, I hear you. And yeah, my bird's over there. He's making noise. Yes, I hear you. I'm just right here. Can I make my video? Alright, he's not going to be quiet. <laughs> That's Cupcake. That's the name of the bird. He's a cockatiel. He's about 16, 17, 18 years old. He's old. He's an old bird. But he's still lovable. Anyways, folks, welcome to an episode of Grave Time. My name is Christian Apple, and uh, today's episode is about, <laughs> oh boy, uh, this one's going to be a doozy, folks. Uh, <laughs> today's episode is about the Vampire of Sacramento, otherwise known as Richard Trent Chase. He was a serial killer during 1977 and 1978, uh, 40 years ago. Um, <laughs> I'm currently 37 years old, and it was definitely before my time. I was born in 1981. And so anyone that's probably about their mid-30s and uh, even below probably have no idea who this guy is. Um, but hey, it's a, part of, uh, it's a part of Sacramento history, and it's part of California history. Therefore, it's part of American history. And uh, I don't normally do episodes on serial killers uh, because that's just not my thing. But uh, before we go into this interesting episode, uh, <laughs> uh, let's go ahead and hear a word from one of my subscribers. Take it away, buddy. Hi, my name is Aaron. Me and my family recently moved to the great state of Oklahoma. But we stay connected and learn about the history of California and Sacramento in general by the show Grave Time. From the famous to the infamous, you will learn something. Today's episode is The Vampire of Sacramento. Now, I never knew about this guy. Uh, my dad works for the Sacramento County Sheriff's Department, and um, I've never heard this story before and um, until about a year ago. Tomorrow will be one year exactly since this article came out. This is the local free paper, the News and Review. It's got everything from, you know, concerts on the back, um, lots of marijuana advertisements. Other people would refer to this magazine as uh, the Sacramento edition of High Times. Um, a lot of people use this newspaper to wipe their ass with or their, <laughs> leave it for, you know, they're bird caged, you know, or for their animals to pee and poop on. Um, it's <laughs> there's a lot of stuff in here. There's some really good resources in here. I mean, I like to be educated by, you know, some articles in here on restaurants and sometimes movie reviews, and definitely what's coming up music-wise. Who's coming to town? I'm a musician. I like to keep you know track of what's going on in Sacramento and with music. So news review is a really good source for that. Otherwise. Very, very liberal, and 
I'm not liberal, and it does not fit my politics. Um, but I can't help to have kept this issue because it is about all the crazy and sick uh, nut jobs of Sacramento. And uh, Richard Trent Chase, a.k.a. the Dracula of Sacramento, the Vampire of Sacramento, he's featured in here. As well as uh, Dorothy Vente, who... Uh, you know, in the, I think it was the, was it late 80s, early 90s, you know, uh, killed people and put her, put them in, in their, in her backyard and in her basement. And I will eventually do an episode on her. As much as I don't like serial killers, her, I, I feel like, she, the thing of it is, is her story, I feel like it's, it's still, it's part of, you know, the era that I grew up in. So it's relevant to me in my time where Richard Ch Chase, the, Vampire Sacrament isn't. Um, so, anyways, in here I basically told the story. Uh, recently, uh, beginning of this month here in October of 2018, I uh, took a tour at the historical Old City Cemetery, and the tour was called Haunted Sacramento. Uh, myself and about 115 other people were obviously interested enough, interest enough to go check that out. And uh, this guy by the name of Colin, who uh, helps out the cemetery, uh, did a wonderful job researching stuff and doing a very good hour-long tour of spooky, scary, and very disturbing uh, um, stuff that took place in Sacramento and the people who were buried at the cemetery. At one point, we, we uh, stopped, and he began to tell the story of the Vampire Sacramento. Uh, which I was, I was still very familiar with it. There were quite a few younger people about my age group and below who were not aware of the story. Um, Richard Trent Chase was a uh, uh, complete psychopath. Uh, as a child, he had all the signs of a serial killer. He wet the bed, he tortured animals, killed them, and lit fires, a.k.a. a pyro. Those are the signs of a serial killer. Uh, if you have a child... Who does those things you might want them to get some help right away because they're not they're gonna be the next one out there killing people um, this is just the science and the proof behind it you know it's the that's the proof in the pudding right there of a serial killer is those things or if they at least do two of those things get them some help folks okay we don't need more crazy people in this world trust me um, uh, Colin uh, was telling the story uh, about Richard Trent Chase, and um, was telling a story about, you know, um, you know, there's a story about him, um, it's, which is true, um, there was a blender on his stove, and the, inside the blender was the mutilated carcasses of dead animals mixed with Coca-Cola. He would put the mutilated animals, he catch the animals, kill them, mutilate them, and mix them with Coca-Cola, he put them in the blender, and he would drink that. He believed that that gave him nutrients, it gave him, it, it helped him with his illness. Um, he also, you, he also at one point, I guess, shaved his head and would get oranges and he would scrub the oranges into his scalp, believing that the nutrients or the vitamin C would seep down into his brain and um, make him well. Um, this guy did horrific things. And so... Um, after seeing Colin, you know, do this, and I had filmed everything with my camera, as I'm using right now, somehow the footage got Sorry about that, folks. So my no, battery just died. Um, back to what I was saying about Colin. He did a wonderful job of doing that tour of Haunted Sacramento. And also telling the story of uh, Richard Trent Chase and Dorothy Levente. And um, that haunted house there on um, 22nd 8th Street. Which is really not haunted, but supposedly some ghost hunters went there and they've got EVPs and this and that. But the otherwise known as the Hart Family House, or as people know it as the Martinez House. But that's not what we're here to talk about. So, uh, I'm really huge. I'm just really just. I'm really bummed that somehow the footage got deleted. So now I have to go through this and whatnot. And. It's, it just adds some more time. <laughs> I didn't want this to be the TV show or, you know, a show all about me. Hey, look, everybody, it's me, Christian. I'm talking a lot. I sound like a yenta. 
Big old blabbermouth. An old cackling woman. <sighs> you know, I wanted to have, you know, the, 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 the audio stuff, you know, the audio and video, you know, with, um, or the footage, I should say, with Colin telling the story, then go from there to say, hey, welcome to Grave Time. My name's Christian Apple, and we're on location of where these people got killed. <laughs> um, you know, enough with all that. Um, uh, I do not, I'm not, you know, this episode, yeah, we're getting close to Halloween, and everyone likes creeping, creepy and uh, scary st stories, and this is definitely one. And when I went on location to these places, I was definitely creeped out. Um, I'm a human being, and, you know, and a uh, God-fearing man, and uh, this stuff is not cool. And I definitely have remorse. And feel really bad for the people who lost their lives, and I even do have a little bit of a little bit in me also feels bad for Richard Trent Chase, um, that his mom supposedly you know believed that oh my son's okay I'm going to take him off his medication then he went cuckoo again and started killing people um, you know um, <laughs> the guy's a sicko and. Um, what he did was wrong, and uh, I just ask, you know, God have mercy upon his soul, and, you know, God have mercy on the others who, who, who perished. And um, when I went to the very last um, a house where the people were murdered, um, after I was done filming, um, I didn't film it, but I, you know, I just went ahead and said a prayer, and I asked God um, to forgive me for doing this video, or this footage. Because it's definitely out of my realm. It, it, doing serial killers is just not my thing. Going to graveyards, telling history about famous people, historical people. I don't have a problem doing that. Um, but telling the story of some sick bastard and the gruesome stuff that he did to these people, it's just not my thing. Um, but um, so I went out and filmed all this all this footage, and then to find out that the footage that I filmed with Colin at the historical Old City Cemetery in Sacramento was deleted. So I'm like, well, I'm, I spent all Saturday, basically, spent six hours on Saturday going on location, finding these places, and having the kahunis, or kahunas, you know, the balls, basically, to film the, these locations. Because uh, I was really creeped out. I just, you know, just was not, was just, just did not really want to do it, but um, like I said, I had this amazing footage with Colin, and it's just like, man, this is such a great way to um, show what kind of stuff that the historical cemetery does, you know, tours and whatnot, telling the story, you know, kind of getting more people interested in cemeteries because really that's where, if you want to learn about history, that's that, that's definitely the first place to go. Um, if you don't have a museum in your town, definitely the first place to go is a cemetery. Research the people that are there. Sometimes everything you need to know is right there on their tombstone, their epitaph. Um, but yeah, uh, so the last house I was at, as soon as I was done filming everything, I said a prayer, asked God for forgiveness, forgive me for um, doing this video, um, for, and um, yeah, I said a prayer for you know the people who perished, you know God, um, I, I just pray that they're with you, Lord, that they're not suffering anymore, that they're in a better place. Um, God have mercy upon Richard Trent Chase's soul. Um, you know, and um, as soon as I as soon as I said Amen, within a, a matter of seconds, in the distance I could hear church bells ring, and I just felt like God was telling me it was a sign from God. I felt like He was telling me that everything's okay. So, um, uh, as a Christian, I um, I sometimes do bring up um, my walk with Jesus, uh, my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. My relationship with the Lord and um, I sometimes put it in videos sometimes I don't um, but when, when dealing with videos where people have died um, horrific in horrific ways I can't help but want to hope that they're in a better way a better place and that somehow causes me to want to talk about uh, about the Lord, uh, but in no way am I trying to preach to anyone, trying to bash you over the head with the Bible. Um, it's just uh, I respect everyone else's views for the most part. Um, 
Here we go. The story of the Vampire of Sacramento. Thirty-seven, thirty-four. Ambrose Griffin shot killed while taking groceries out of his car. He was the very first victim of the Vampire of Sacramento, also known as Richard Trent Chase. Sadly, this guy didn't know he was even coming. Apparently, Richard Chase had been in his vehicle coming down here, either this way or the other way, here on Robertson Avenue. Took out a gun and point blank basically did a drive by. Shot and killed with one shot. Fatally killed, wounded, fatally wounding, mortally wounding, Mr. Griffin, as he's taking groceries out of the back of his vehicle into through his garage to his house. Didn't even know it was coming. Okay, so here we are, the location of victim number two. Um, this is called Tioga Way, and um, the address was 3730. Um, now, driving up and down the road here, there's a lady down there doing some yard work. I had asked her, and she told me. Yeah, actually, it's funny. She said it's been a, the topic of the of um, Richard Trent Chase, the uh, Vampire of Sacramento. It's apparently been a, a topic of a lot of people lately, and I don't know why. Um, but anywho, she told me that you know the house would have been on this side of the property, or you know the street. Now, right by, right over here, over this brick wall, is a Sprouts. And on the corner is a fire station. I just spoke to um, a fireman who has got to be about my age because he had no idea <laughs> um, about uh, this situation. I uh, felt invited and walked into this household. It seemed like it was right in here in this area. And uh, unfortunately, went up to the gal and shot her. And... Um, he ended up, uh, she was um, three months pregnant. She, uh, he ended up uh, mutilating her body. Um, got her organs and just just went to town on them. I, you know, just messing them up. I don't know if he rolled around in, I don't know if he rolled around in her flesh or what the hell he did. Uh, we're talking about a sick bastard here. I, you know, I, and um, he even went as far as to shove, um, feces down her throat and uh, apparently he also drank her blood <sighs> Man. 
telling you folks, this is a very tough, tough episode of Grave Time for me to do. This is just not, this is not the type of stuff I normally film. You know, I'm used to going to places that used to exist or graveyards. But having to do a, a thing on a serial killer, <laughs> it's not, this is not my thing. This will probably be the last and final time I ever do something like this because it's just, it's sickening. It's, it's not, it's not part of who I am doing this kind of thing. I don't even feel like this is even really worth or even worthy of even being on grave time. Only for the fact that it's part of Sacramento history. I'm from Sacramento. And um, somehow, because it is Sacramento history, it's American history. And obviously the crime took place well before I was even born. And I just recently heard about the Sacramento uh, vampire. Or the vampire of Sacramento. Just probably about a year ago. And I feel bad for these neighbors. Anyone who's lived in these houses, even as far back as the late 70s, I feel bad for them. It's probably a parade of people who come down here all the time looking for this house, and like myself. You know, some of these people just want to live their lives. You know, they really don't want to be associated with this, and I totally understand why. Here's a better idea of what it would look like. Here's the fire station. There would be houses all around here, lined up here, just like there's on that side street. And you can see, it's a shopping center. You got a Ulta, you got Sprouts. So between here and here, stuck down this wall here, you would have houses. And one of them, one of them housed a woman who was brutally murdered by a sick bastard. Here's the uh, shopping center that basically sits on the majority of the property of where this lady was brutally murdered. Now I want to, I would like to share something I saw in a documentary um, about uh, the Vampire of Sacramento. Town and Country Village, a very well known shopping center in Sacramento. It's, uh, I could be wrong, but I think it was one of the very first shopping centers. Or, uh, it could be the very first shopping center in Sacramento, or Ritzy Sac, you know, or the probably the one that had probably the most Ritz to it, I guess. Um, I know, um, I know from a so from this documentary, I, I saw this uh, this lady, she uh, she went to high school with Richard Trin Chase, and uh, she recognized him. You know, from high school, and he was approaching her as she was, I guess, like getting close to her car, and she noticed something kind of creepy about him. Um, as he was talking to her or something, and I guess he went to go put out his hand or something like that, or she noticed his hands, and his hands were covered in blood, and um, she, out of fear, jumped in her car and left. She eventually. Uh, I believe she eventually saw something on TV as they were trying to give a description of um, what Richard Ch Chase like typically wore. I knew he was really, uh, I don't want to say anorexic, but he was a very thin guy. He had really terrible facial hair, you know, European facial hair, uh, somewhat long hair. Uh, he was notorious for wearing an orange jacket, but that was typical for those period of time, you know, the late 70s. A lot of people had orange jackets, you know, okay. You know. Um, but this guy obviously stood out because he had blood on his hands and so she ended up contacting uh, the police and letting them know that she came in contact uh, with who she believed was the murderer. She 
um, through there she was able to give them a name because she remembered him from high school. His uh, description fit what they believe uh, Richard Trent, Trent Trace had looked like. And uh, the, the, basically the, the, the icing on the cake was her testimony that she said that he had uh, blood on his hands. And sooner or later they figured out what apartment complex he was in and they eventually would catch him. Um, of course when they came upon his apartment complex, the apartment complex next to him uh, was empty and he, there was a hole in the building, or a hole in the wall. He was living in, in two, two buildings. When they, when they eventually caught up with him and arrested him and started exploring through his household, that's when they found out that the whole, whole entire apartment was covered in blood. Covered, it just saturated in blood. Everything was covered in blood. I mean, it was a bloodbath. Let's just put it that way. So that he, uh, yes, he, uh, they found a weird contraption on his uh, stove, and it was a blender with uh, corpses of animals and uh, Coca-Cola. And he would drink that, and he believed that that gave him nutrient, nutrients that he needed. Um, you know that you're a serial killer. <laughs> I sound like almost like Jeff Foxworthy, except instead of redneck jokes, serial killer jokes. You know you're a serial killer when you're drinking corpses of animals and Coca-Cola. Well, right here is the last and final house, number three, where probably the most awful carnage took place with Richard Trent Chase, aka the Vampire of Sacramento. Now, I'm not sure if this is the actual house or if it's been torn down and rebuilt. Um, it looks like it's it looks like a newer house or somewhat of a Something like that. Man, creepy. So once again, we're to Trent Chase. Just be walking around and just uh, be up to no good. He'd just go, he'd just be looking into people's houses and whatnot, and go up to try and front doors and stuff. And that's how neighbors kind of know something was weird about this guy. He just did seem like he really fit into the neighborhood. Like, much like myself, <laughs> filming these locations. Anywho, I have good intentions. I mean, trust me, I do. Um, still questioning why I'm doing these videos. Well, on a serial killer, that's really not my thing, like I said. I'm okay with graveyards, I'm okay with, you know, lost and forgotten landmarks, but this is a little pushing a little too far. <laughs> Anywho. Richard Chin Trace went into this home because the door was unlocked. A guy by the name of Daniel approached him, I think basically saying, Wait, who are you? Richard Chin Chase basically hold up a gun, shot him right in the forehead, execution style. Went to one of the bedrooms where he killed Evelyn. And, um, which was a, mo a mother, uh, the mother there, Evelyn, um, Marath, I think that's how you say her last name. And, uh, went up and killed her execution style. And then her son was asleep. And, um, his name was Jason. I believe he was five years old, either five or seven years old. And shot him in the forehead, execution style. Um,. Uh, Basically, after that, he basically did his thing, you know, um, mutilated the bodies, this and that, drank their blood, this and that. Um, my understanding is this house was a horrific sight, as anything would be if it was a 
murder scene. There was a child that was missing. Daniel Jr. was missing. He had been missing for a long, long time. And um, he was uh, 22, uh, 22 months old. Uh, Richard Trent Chase um, kidnapped him. Not sure exactly how long after he kidnapped him that he murdered him. But basically, uh, his body was found at the um, Arcade Baptist Church um, in a dumpster, you know, in a box. And uh, the body, the, his, uh, his head was decapitated from his body, and obviously that's what decapitation is. And um, it was found by a janitor. I don't know if I could ever go to a church knowing that that would be the place of a murder, murder victim's body, let alone a child. <sighs> Anyways, he decapitated his, his head and drank his blood. As if he didn't know by now. That's why he was called the Vampire Sacramento. He was a sick bastard. He was a sick bastard. I want to say more profound words <laughs> profoundly <laughs> than that, but I don't even think giving him the F word or calling him a piece of crap or this or that, it just, there's no words that can describe the, this, this, this human being that could do something to such people. Now, you can point the blame, obviously, at Richard Chin Trace's mom, because supposedly he was doing just fine on his meds, as the doctors gave him, after originally discovered um, at some lake, um, basically covered in blood, and his truck basically abandoned with a, uh, torso of some kind of animal that was bloodied in a box in his passenger seat. Uh, he went to a psych ward or some mental hospital where people called him, uh, Dracula, because he drank his own blood, or he would drink the blood of other people, and that's how we get the name, the, was Dracula of Sacramento, the Vampire of Sacramento. Obviously, we'd see from, or as we know from his murders, he would drink people's blood.